have to, once we, now I've measured the length, I have to start an extension. And the key is, it's a back extension and then a leg curl. And it has to be both of those motions in two pieces. So when I go, I'm going down, I'm going forward. So here now, it's a, you know, a back extension. It's like a hyper that I'm doing first. And then I've got to drive with my toes, driving my knees into the hump and perform a leg curl action. That's what makes this a valuable movement. Otherwise, it's a complete waste of time. So you're supposed to drive with your toes? Toes, you're supposed to push, your, push your feet in. Because okay. here, you know, most of you, you really can't, there's no way to drive with your heels because you have no muscles. So when you think about glute ham gastric, that's why someone who does it right, sometimes people will get calf cramps too because they've never used their toe before. So you're pushing. Because the cool thing about this is that you're supposed to be getting a similar posterior chain improvement that you get in running, which is your toe on the ground, pushing down into the ground and then recruiting your hamstrings. So you should be able to get in this position. And that's why even the same way we're doing negatives, you know, negative glute ham kind of thing, we should have that same action of pushing. You know, if I'm pushing with my toes, I'm gonna lower myself back to that position. But it's really hard to do right. So you've gotta think, you know, so it's glutes here first, and then it switches over to hamstring. So I'm gonna be here, and then I'm gonna pop myself up, keep my body straight, not folding back down. And I'm, I'm starting to cramp up, because so, you know, doing them slow like that. If you only go out up. to your body, it's just a straight line, you can in pretty much all hamstrings. Right, and you, and you lose, the whole idea here is that you can get three <laughs> muscles incorporated in one loop. You can get glute, then you can get hamstring, and you can get gastro, all working at the same time if you're doing these right. So. And you want to come up all the way? Yeah, you want to come here. Yep, you want to be here. Yep, and because again, when you're lower, because here's what's going to create the hamstring stress as I lower back down. The big value of this exercise, really, or one of the big values, is in the eccentric hamstring stress. You get a really good, and that's why we'll do kind of those partner negative ones, because it's a really great eccentric. If you think the function of your hamstring in sprinting is eccentric during the swing phase, it's concentric during the stance phase. So your hamstring keeps your leg from extending. So if you're thinking, if I'm here, if I go to, to run through, the action of my hamstring is actually to slow my shin down so I don't end up way up here. I mean, I plant back underneath so it's going to work. A big portion of what it's supposed to do is eccentric. So that's the you know that's the value to it. But you don't break the hips until you're straight. Until you're right. Yeah. Straight, break the hips and and you'll see if you try it, like I said, that was just a couple reps for me. It's really hard. You need to do a little more. Is this you need to do a little more close to your chain work. But is this harder than the body curl? Just really that I think this is harder than the body curl. Um, probably pretty close. So I'm not very good at either one. So. You like these though? I really like these. Well, I like them because they're. They're easy and cheap, and I think now, instead of having a regular movement <laughs> machine is up here, it takes up twice the space. And the reality is I can have four of these, like this, sitting over in the corner, and when I'm ready to do blue hands, I can work them out and use them. It, yeah, so instead of having four machines that sit there for nine weeks at a time and never get touched, and okay, we're gonna do blue hands, we need to use them. Then we're done with them, well, you can't take them like this and pile them up. Or you can't take them, you know, these things are cool because all of a sudden I can take this and I can use it for, for you know, for my hip lifts and my bridging stuff. You know, there's a lot of this. I can get much more back if I buck out of this than I can out of a blue ham machine. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Quick question. No, absolutely not. <laughs> so if you're doing this, you're pushing your toes in the ground, isn't that a lot of stress on the hamstring from your plantar flex? Doesn't that turn your glutes off? But if you think, when you, when you push, I mean, there's no question that you're pushing against the ground with your, I don't think you necessarily want to get to here, but you're clearly going to push. But aren't you trying to dorsiflex when you push the ball in your foot when you run? But I think you're trying to dorsiflex to be in position to strike, but once you strike, you're going to use your calf. If you, but if you, I thought the idea is strike, dorsiflex, and come right off right, strike, and then push. No, see, I think, I think strike and push through as hard as you can. I think the only, the only reason they have you dorsiflex I don't believe all the hamster, you know, turn your hamstring off, turn your glute off. It's to give you an effective level. So if I'm, if I'm plantar flexed when I hit the ground, I lose all that force production by being forced into dorsiflexion. If I'm here, if I drive the ground and I'm plantar flexed, I'm immediately putting that force into the ground. But there's no question that there's going to be a huge, if nothing else, a really, really big eccentric load on your gastro. And if you look at here, 
you know, when you get that push, you're pushing, but you're not getting, you're not moving very much. So you're not getting a really big, you know, we're not getting like a toe raise type concentric contraction, but we're getting force. But I mean, you clearly don't want to be, you, know, you don't want to be like, you know, like hot stove off the ground. Because you won't get any push. You've got to strike the ground really, really hard and drive yourself through the ground as hard as you possibly can. So basically, you, you want to leave with your toe plan flex like that? No, you don't want to leave with your toe plan, no. No. Okay. But you want to but you want to drive through the ground, and when you do it, that's loading your calf. Sure. You're not, you're, you're saying that you want to be dorsiflexed and unload and try to unload your calf. You don't. You want to be dorsiflexed so you can strike down, but you're going to get it. You're going to get a really big load on your calf when you hit the ground that way. You know, and you want, I mean, if you look, and this is that Whalen study, it's very, very clear that the speed relates most closely to force put into the ground. And that's where, like, a lot of, you know, the fast, I, I think that's all bullshit. Because it just teaches people to look good, but they don't run fast. That's why I'd rather have, I would much rather have somebody push a sled than do all kinds of, you know, B-skip and all this kind of stuff, because what you end up with are pretty slow people. You know, guys that look like track guys, but don't run like them. So that's why, if you notice, like we don't, we almost put zero emphasis on that aspect of it, and much more of the emphasis in terms of developing the ability to put force into the ground. I think what ends up happening, and then I'm gonna leave because I gotta get out of here, is that people take top speed concepts of sprinters and apply them to team sport athletes, which in my mind is a mistake. Because if you're looking at something, you know, if you're running, if you're cycling through and running, you know, 200 meters or 100 meters or whatever it is, then there, there's different mechanics that are going on. Those mechanics almost never occur in any team sport that's contested in the world. <laughs> and it's the people, if you look at, no matter how bad a guy runs, a guy with a 40 inch vertical jump runs really fast. No matter what he looks like, he can be the worst looking runner in the world, he'll be fast. So, and that's somebody who can be force into the ground, and yes, you want to be able to set the piston to hit the ground, but you don't really want to be, you know, it's not, ideally, in a perfect world, you minimize time on the ground while you maximize force into the ground, but that's a really efficient person. You've got to get somebody who can put force into the ground first before you worry about getting force out of the ground, you know what I mean, like off-ground, you know, minimizing that time factor.